Welcome back. Uh, today marks the 28th uh, anniversary of uh, Nile TV International, the voice of Egypt uh, to the world and uh, the first channel that is uh, speaking in languages uh, to uh, and uh, giving uh, the picture of Egypt to the world. I congratulate all my uh, colleagues. Concerning our main topic today, we uh, are going to discuss uh, today uh, and speak about uh, the, uh, Egypt, the queens of uh, the Nile and and especially we are going to, to uh, talk about uh, uh, Queen uh, Ekhutub uh, the first uh, who is uh, the mother of Ahmus the first to shed more light on this we have the pleasure to uh, host this morning in the breakfast show our uh, distinguished uh, guest uh, Dr. Ghada Dous uh, historian Egyptologist uh, good morning Dr. Dous good morning well uh, Dr. Dous how did men and women uh, interact in uh, the past to create a moral uh, society well, in the ancient Egyptian time, if we build on the Egyptian legacy, we notice that the ancient Egyptian women had rights that overcome the rights of women in all comparable societies. Like, for instance, uh, ancient Egyptian women were equal in the court of law with men. Uh, they could rule themselves. Uh, they could own property. They worked alongside with their husbands in the fields. Um, um, uh, like upper class women, they didn't work actually outside the house a lot, but their main job was to superintend the servants and also uh, the children. We have women doctors, like a one called Pesichat from the 4th dynasty. She was yes. the chief of doctors. Uh, we have a woman who reached uh, the level or the rank of being a vizier, which is like a prime minister nowadays. This is the 6th uh, dynasty. Um, Egyptians yeah. preferred to be governed by women from royal blood rather than men who did not have royal blood. So actually this goes very long period of time, the rights of women uh, over uh, the other women from comparable societies. Yes, uh, yes. Dr. Doos, uh, the Egyptian woman has a strong uh, character and this is clear uh, since the start of the Egyptian uh, civilization. It's very clear that the woman was uh, able to rule and uh, to take uh, a decision, isn't it? That's, that's true. Like we have very, very famous uh, queens. Uh, one of them can be like uh, Hatshepsut, who ruled around 21 years, very peaceful, very prosperous years. Yes. Uh, and also Cleopatra is not to be forgotten. Cleopatra, yes, was from a Ptolemaic dynasty, uh, but actually she ruled and lived a typical Egyptian queen. And we have a lot of them also to give examples. Uh, yes, uh, could you give us uh, more examples about the Egyptian queens? Uh, the Egyptian, well, mainly the one who is very, very popular is Hatshepsut, because Hatshepsut at the very beginning was like a co-regent yes. uh, with her um, uh, nephew, and uh, who became later her son-in-law. Uh, and then finally, she fell in love with uh, the throne, and she got a very strong backup from the priests mm -hmm. that she was chosen as a pharaoh. She was always called the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, not the queen of Upper and Lower Egypt. Most of the rule of Hatshepsut was very peaceful. It was only trade expeditions. She sent an expedition to Pan, to the land of Somalia. She has a beautiful, beautiful temple on the west bank of Luxor. Yes. And she had many obelisks. I mean, one of the best or the highest surviving in Karnak, it's Hatshepsut's um, uh, obelisk. So this is one of the most famous queens. Yes. Mm. So, uh, Dr. Radouz, concerning uh, Ahutab uh, the first, uh, could you give us an, uh, an idea about she ruled? How many years uh, did she uh, rule? Okay. Um, unfortunately, Ahutab is not known as much as other queens. In spite there of are that, several queens with the same name, isn't it? Uh, yes. Actually, there are three Ahutabs, but the most important one of them is the one that we will the talk first. about today. Is the first yes. Ahutab the first? Yes. Um, this queen actually ruled between the year 1530 and 1560 BC. She didn't really rule the whole, or control the whole country, but she played a very important role. How do we know about uh, the, the uh, life of Yahatub? We know from a stila. Stila means a, a slab of stone in Karnak Temple. It tells the bravery story of this queen, Hatshepsut. 
um, the story goes as follows that this queen was um, a, a daughter of uh, another queen called Titishari and she was the wife and consort of a king called Skenan Ra from the 17th uh, yes. dynasty. Skenan Ra uh, when he was fighting the Hyksos and he died in the battlefield and we found his mummy by the way um, this queen, Yahatib, did not stop the war. On the contrary, she railed the troops until her elder son, Kamosa, grew up and continued this holy war against the Hyksos. Mm. And then, after Kamosa died in the battlefield, this did not stop. She encouraged her son, her younger son, Ahmus, to continue this holy war until he was able to expel the Hyksos out of the country. Mm. And not only this, Ahmus, when he was busy uh, in Nubia to regain some Egyptian territories, this queen uh, continued to make pressure on the invader until Ahmus came back from Nubia and he was able to control the Hyksos and reunite Upper and Lower Egypt again. Yes. So what are uh, the, um, uh, the names or the titles uh, uh, that she had? Well, she had several names, several titles. She was called uh, the uh, royal wife, uh, the consort of the king. She was called also uh, the uh, regent because she ruled as a regent with her son, uh, Tut Moses, uh, uh, sorry, Ahmos. The first. Yes. Yeah. So, doctor, could you give us an idea about uh, her uh, daily life and uh, her life with her family? Well, uh, again, we don't know much about her life uh, and family life because what we know about royalties in ancient Egyptian Egypt, we know of their achievements, of their um, uh, wars, of the battles, of the offerings, but they don't really mention a lot of details about their life. So as I told you, what we know, we know from the Karnak temple, from this From the drawings on the, from the, the walls of the temple. That tells how royal, because to them, the king was like a god. So they don't really need to show a lot of daily life activities on the walls of the temples. So um, why was she uh, th that famous? She... The the first yeah. was very famous. Is it because of the long years she uh, ruled? She well, ruled for 30 years, isn't uh, it? Uh, yeah, she was, she was in power. Not yeah. She didn't really rule the yes, whole country. Yes. She was in power for almost 30 years. She's that famous because she saved Egypt. You know, the Hyksos, it's a kind of people, troops, uh, tribes came from the northeast. And they invaded Egypt and they were ab around about to rule Egypt for around 100 years. Yes. From around 1650 BC to around 1550 BC. But when the Hyksos came, they did not rule the whole country of Egypt. They ruled the north and they had their capital in an area called Avaris in Eastern Delta. The Egyptian royal family lived in the south, where? In Luxor nowadays, or it was Waset at that time. So they were always a threat to the Egyptian authority. So when the Egyptian royal family in the 70th dynasty under Skenan Ra were able to invade them and reunite Upper and Lower Egypt, she played that important role by always making sure that Egypt is united. The son was still young, so she gathered and railed the troops until he grew up and he continued with the war. Yes. When her elder son died, she didn't lose hope. She even asked her younger son, Ahmus, to continue with this holy war. And that's why she was that famous. You know what? She was worshipped by the ancient Egyptians at the end yes. because she is a strong a woman strong woman and mm. she's the source of yes. of, of uh, unity courage, courage and yes. unity between upper and lower egypt again in the new kingdom yes yes uh, mm. what about her achievements well uh, her achievements mainly it's that she was able to back up <coughs> egypt to be reunited upper and lower egypt you know starting from the new kingdom egypt did not uh, stay as just a strong kingdom but we turn to be an empire and that's all because of her so Egypt had a huge empire from the new kingdom around uh, 1500 BC and that's because of her being that strong woman that stubborn that she insisted that after losing her husband she lost her two sons but still she continued she continued 
uh, to be on the yes. on the strong woman. So uh, where is uh, the role um, of Ehutib um, uh, the first in uh, representing or um, uh, playing um, or um, as a representative of Ahmas uh, the first in Tibis? Well, she was uh, as a mother, and he was still young. And as I told you, she, when he went uh, after he was able to expel the Hyksos, he went to Nubia. And that's to regain some of the Egyptian uh, territories. So she continued to be in control or she continued to, to gather the troops around her until he came back from Nubia. Because otherwise, the Hyksos were trying to re-steal the Egyptian throne. And yes. this is something that she did not allow. Later, she was awarded by her son. And she was awarded that her name was mentioned in all uh, the temples and that she was like a goddess to the ancient Egyptians because she is the power uh, and the inspiration of the Egyptian unity yes. at that time. Uh, we'd like to shed light on her role in the, the military. How did she give uh, courage to the soldiers? Uh, um, how did she act? Well, she acted not as just a queen, like a mother queen. She mm. acted very strongly. As a fighter. With, uh, as a fighter, yes. a very strong backup. <coughs> Uh, to the soldiers, to the officers, giving them hope uh, that even though their king, who was Ahmus, was away, yet she is there and she was present. So that was a very strong point. Yes, so we'd like to shed more light uh, also. You've just mentioned uh, the conquest of uh, Hyksos. Yeah, the, the Hyksos, um, it's um, these people, the tribes who called themselves the shepherd kings who came from yes. the northeast. And when the Hyksos came to Egypt, uh, they were actually more advanced uh, than the Egyptians in the arts of war. You know, they came with a chariot, the horse and the chariot, that's something that we didn't know, and the wheel. So they were able to defeat the Egyptian troops for a while, and they invaded Egypt from the northeast. They made for themselves a capital in eastern delta, in an area called Avaris. So, the Hyksos were strong for a while, yes. but the Egyptian kings or the Egyptian royal family did not really lose hope. And in the south, which was Luxor or Waset, we were able to regather or uh, uh, make our army again, and we were able to uh, defeat, defeat the Hyksos after ruling Egypt for around 100 or 120 years, yes. but only uh, the north. Uh, there is a, a um, very funny story of how this war has started. Uh, this uh, story tells that the king of the Hyksos in the north uh, sent a message to the Egyptian king in the south and telling him, um, silence the hippopotamus, I cannot sleep, it's causing a lot of uh, noise. So this was, you know, how can I silence the hippopotamus? So the Egyptian king was offended. And this started uh, the holy uh, war against the Hyksos after we have actually copied from them the chariot and the wheel. We have did a lot of modification to this chariot and the wheel. And through this chariot and the wheel, we were able to turn to be an empire, a huge empire. We went all the way to the six cataracts and we went all the way to the regions of uh, Syria, Lebanon and even uh, southern Turkey. Yes. So. Yes. Um, Dr. Doos, what about uh, the tomb of uh, uh, Ahtub uh, the uh, first? Um, well, unfortunately, we didn't find a very beautiful colored tomb. We found her uh, a coffin. It was uh, in one of the tombs in an area called Asasif on the West Bank of Luxor. Yes. And it was among 13 other coffins. It was very nicely painted and colored, but it wasn't a very expensive. Uh, um, uh, what does this uh, show? Or it was uh, stealed by the thieves or something? Well, was this, it this more uh, rich? This, this probably, this is probably. what happened mm. at that time because you see, as I told you, it was after the period of the Hyksos. There yes. was a period we call it the intermediate period. Yes. So she might have had a better coffin or a better burial place that was stolen by the thieves. And of course, she's not the only one. So yeah, unfortunately, yes. Yes. Uh, what are the kinds of uh, monuments that she left behind? Uh, she didn't leave much. Uh, she just left this, or they left for her, this uh, stela in Karnak and uh, this uh, coffin of her. But she, as I said, she was not really ruling. She was just in control. So she didn't have a lot of 
monuments. Maybe uh, she had uh, a lot of monuments, but it was uh, uh, destroyed or something. Uh, probably because this is you know uh, something that we know about uh, ancient Egyptians. Ancient Egyptians, yes. like King Khufu, for example. Yeah, you we don't have any statues for him except uh, a small statue in uh, the Egyptian museum, isn't it? Yes. You see, uh, what happens is that uh, the the idea of recycling was yes. was very yes. common in the in the ancient Egyptian time. So instead of uh, just wasting time and sending uh, workers to the quarries or the mm. goldsmith areas to make new statues and make new monuments, they just erase the names and put the names. And the one who was very famous to do this was Ramses II. The second. He ruled yes. 67 years. And even the monuments of his own father, City the First, were uh, he destroyed, didn't really destroy, but he just erased the names of his father and he put his own names. So this was very common. Probably she had other monuments, but probably they were gone in a way or another. You know, it has been thousands and thousands of years through this kind of, of, uh, of history. Or maybe in the modern period, after deciphering the Rosetta Stone, mm -hmm. Uh, the world became crazy about Egypt. This is what's called Egyptomania. So travelers from all around the world went looking or digging for Egyptian monuments. We lost mummies, we lost tombs, we lost, you know, a lot, either inside the country or taken outside the country. Yes. Dr. Doos, what was the role of uh, the women uh, at home uh, and uh, their duties towards their families uh, in uh, ancient Egyptian uh, time? Um, women played very important role. As I told you, women would work right next to their husbands, sometimes in the fields. If it's a, 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 um, a royal or a um, <coughs> upper class woman, uh, it's not necessarily that she worked outside the house, but her job was to superintend the servants, to take care of the education of the children. We have uh, the inscription of an, uh, a nobleman called Annie. And he is talking to one of his students, telling him, don't you ever forget what your mother has done to you. Don't forget what your mother has helped you. Yes. Even when you were at school, she would go to the master and bring him some uh, bread and beer. Yes. Uh, uh, finally, because we're running out of time, actually, okay. unfortunately, yep. uh, could you give us an idea about the, uh, the, the Egyptian woman um, uh, long ago in uh, the era of the ancient Egyptians uh, uh, take care of their uh, beauty? Uh, give us an idea about this. Well, uh, in spite of being hard workers, uh, mm -hmm. they were they took very good care of their beauty. Mm -hmm. We ha they had uh, makeup, very good makeup. Uh, the wigs. It was the occupation of a noble woman to fix her wig and also their eyes, uh, their their eyes, eyes. The, uh, the coal of the eyes. Yes. Uh, they had, you know what, anti-wrinkles cream. They had uh, cleansing creams. Uh, they had prescription to turn them to use again, like Botox nowadays, you know. Yes, even the skin they care. A, a skin, yes, yes, as I told you, cleansing creams and mm. anti-wrinkle creams. So but using a natural... Uh, uh, nat of, course, of course, natu uh, natural uh, uh, plants and others like the henna and others. Yes, yes. yes. I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your valuable information, uh, you. Dr. Ghada Dugus, historian, Egyptologist. Thank you very much. I really had the pleasure to have you uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for following me. I leave you now with my colleague, Nermin Abdurrahman. <laughs>